morning. Can you hear me? You can't, so they can't. Can you turn it up, please? Is that better? There it goes. Now it's up. Very nice. I'm sorry. We always have a little trouble as we get started. Just two quick announcements. We'll have the key for the exam up on the website, so if you want to see how you did, we'll give your exams back on Monday. So they'll be out there at Monday for you to pick up. And on the whole, you obviously did very well, but it's amazing how many students didn't, and you just don't know why, but it's just not a giveaway. So Monday you'll pick them up. We start a new system, the digestive system, and we're going to see that it's a simple tube from mouth to anus, and it's designed to to prepare food to digest food and to absorb food to eliminate waste. So we'll see all the changes that occur in this simple tube to carry out these functions. So we'll give the basic names. We've had them, nothing difficult about it. But we'll start with the oral cavity. What follows the oral cavity? No. What part of the pharynx? Nasal pharynx? Oral pharynx. Let's be correct. Oral pharynx. And then the esophagus. And then what? What's next? Pardon? Stomach, stomach, sure. And after the stomach, small intestine. After small intestine, <laughs> large intestine. And then the rectum. and then the anus. So we'll see how these will change, what their basic picture is and how they differ. In the oral cavity, we're going to have glands. So we'll have salivary glands pouring in. And for the small intestine, we'll have glands. What glands will pour their secretions into the small intestine? Pancreatic. And the liver. The liver forms the bile, right? Liver is a gland. We'll form bile, and bile will go into the small intestine. So this gives you the basic, basic fundamental divisions. So let's start and work down from the mouth
here's the lips. What muscle forms the lips? The orbicularis oris, right. And it's covered with epithelium. What kind of epithelium are you going to put? Stratified squamous, but this time a special type of stratified squamous. What's it going to be? Keratinized. So we'll have the epithelium is keratinized. Stratified. Squamous. What is keratin? Keratin is an insoluble protein. Insoluble protein. And as we leave the lips and go into the oral cavity, the oral cavity will have just plain stratified squamous. transition, put your tongue on your lips and then bring it back into your mouth. You feel the sharp transition between the keratinized and the smooth mucous membrane in the mouth. Did you ever know that before? Something so simple? Now, let's look at structures within the mouth. Cavity. Let's start with teeth. Teeth are the hardest structures in the body. So that if there's a fire and the body burns, the only thing that will be left will be the teeth. Did you know that? So that's how they identify individuals are their dental records if something so severe happens. So we're going to see that we have several kinds of teeth for certain purposes at different stages in your life. So we're going to start first with, this will be types, and we'll have deciduous, and you'll have 20 of these. What's the other word for deciduous in your mouth for a tooth? Baby teeth. Does anybody still have baby teeth? Yeah, sure. I usually, there are exceptions, two of you. Did you know that? They erupt about six months and continue to erupt until about the second and a half year. And then we have the permanent teeth. How many of those do we have? 32. And they begin to erupt about six years of age. or minus. So let's look at our permanent teeth, what kinds we have and why we have them.
So we'll have first incisors. How many of those do we have? Eight. And what are they for? Just put your tongue between them. What do they do? They cut that sharp edge, right? So they're for cutting. And then we have canines. How many of those do we have? Four. What are they for? Tearing. You get a really tough piece of meat and you put it there and pull on it, right? Or a candy bar or whatever. <laughs> so they're for tearing. Then the next type will be the premolars. And we'll have eight of those. What are they doing? Grinding, right. You ever looked at, in a cow's mouth? They don't need the tearing and the cutting, do they? They have just molars for cutting their vegetarian diet. And then we have molars. And how many of those do we have? 12 and for grinding. How many have all of their molars? All of your wisdom teeth, too. How many don't have all their wisdom teeth? Isn't that fascinating? Part of the modern generation in evolution. Evidently, we're beginning to lose our third molar because we don't use our jaws for tearing, I mean, for chewing. We have such bland foods. So let's then look at the, an example of a type of tooth, and I've picked the canine to work with. So this will be the structure of the tooth. our example. And we'll put some gum on the side. Here's the gum layer. What's the technical term for gum? Gingiva. Gingiva. So when we get inflammation of our gums, what do we call it? Gingivitis. Good for you. All right, with this, let's start to fill it in. The part that's superior to the gum is called what? crown. The part where the gum comes and meets the tooth is the neck. And below the gum is what? The root. Let's put in a little more. Let's follow the root canal the center of the tooth. This will be our root canal. And it will expand into a pulp cavity. Pulp cavity. What will we find in the pulp cavity? Blood vessels and nerves. And now we 
can begin with the layers. We'll have the outermost layer, the enamel. And then we'll have the dentine. And then cementum. And next is what? Periodontal membrane. Periodontal around the tooth membrane. Periodontal membrane. For some reason, some texts will call it a ligament. So we'll put ligament in parentheses. All right, let's color these in. with enamel and it will be our outermost layer that projects above the gum and comes down a little bit below the gum. Let's go down to the dentine. Cementum. gives a basic structure of a tooth. Each tooth will have the same four components. Now, what adheres the tooth to the bone? This is bone out here. It's the periodontal membrane. As you can see, it's adjacent to bone, so it adheres to tooth. Periodontal membrane. So what three structures keep the tooth in its socket? Does it fall out? Keeps tooth in socket. Well, one, the gingiva.
get older, they lose their teeth because the bone resorbs around the tooth. With aging, bone resorbs. So how are you going to keep your bone healthy? Use it. How are you going to use it? I'll tell you a little story. <laughs> I use the heavy rubber bands around vegetables like broccoli. When you take a shower, you chew those heavy rubber bands. I still have all my teeth. And I wrote to Wrigley's at one time, and I said, why don't you make a therapeutic gum so everybody, they don't want to chew these old rubber bands, give them something <laughs> that tastes good to chew while they're taking their showers. And they said, our customers are very pleased with our soft Wrigley's gum and they sent me a huge carton <laughs> of Wrigley's gum. So it tells, if you have ideas and you want a product, suggest a change and see what you get. We'll take a, anyhow, the point of the story was that the soft gum doesn't do anything for keeping, but the blood flow, that's what you see here. It's just like the brain, we learned, you use it or you lose it. Your muscles, you, you lose them if you don't use them. Your bones do the same thing. So you have to use your bones. This is our health course. We want you all to be very healthy, so keep your teeth. Now, teeth will erode through certain substances that you put in the mouth. You call those dental cavities. Technically, you call them caries. So a cavity equal, these are caries. Caries. And we've asked this before in class how many don't have any dental caries at all? You have to turn around and see it. It's a nice group of them. How many only have one? How many only have two? And then the rest of us all have many more, right? <laughs> but it shows. And what do we put in our toothpaste and drinking water today to prevent these? Fluoride. What country have you been to where the toothpaste says absolutely no fluoride in our toothpaste? I saw that in Kenya because their soil has so much fluoride that their teeth are mottled because of too much already. So they want to guarantee that their toothpaste has no fluoride. So different ways to look at things. But teeth are very dynamic and we want you to maintain healthy ones so you can chew your food so it can digest. Now let's go to the tongue, another structure within the mouth, the oral cavity. Please. It can be, definitely, because you need the calcium for making your strong bones, right? Strong teeth, strong nervous system, strong muscles learned a lot about calcium and its essential role. So now we're going to go to the tongue. And you say, well, it's just a muscle mass covered with epithelium. Let's see how dynamic this tongue is. So we have epithelium covering it. What kind are you going to have? Stratified squamous, sure. Squamous. But you'll see little rises in it on the surface. If we look at the side view or a section, we'll see that there are these little projections on the surface of the tongue. Projections. tongue surface. What do we call them? Papillae. Papillae. Papillae is plural, singular, just an A. 
Now, they're important for many reasons. We're going to have them covered with epithelium, so they're going to have stratified squamous epithelium on these projections. But it's on the sides of these papilla that one sees taste buds. So we'll see a little epithelial design buds here. On the sides of our papilla. so they look like little buds. The nucleus down here, this will be a taste bud, and then it will have its nerve fibers surrounding it. So substances will come in, and this is my taste bud. We have many different types of papilla. I'm just giving one example. I'll show some pictures of different types. But what supplies the anterior two-thirds taste buds? Pardon? Seventh nerve, right. What supplies the posterior one-third of the tongue's taste buds? Glossopharyngeal, sure, I heard it way back there. Did you say it here in the front? We didn't hear you. Sorry, I apologize. Right, you do remember. All right, well now, we've talked about the epithelium. There is skeletal muscle in the tongue. And it goes in many directions. The tongue is very versatile in its movement. So what is the purpose of your tongue? Well, first, it's important with chewing. Purpose, one, chewing. Just try to chew without using your tongue. Your jaw just goes up and down, doesn't it? so all the food will come crunching out. So all the time you're chewing, that tongue is pushing the food back between the teeth, between the upper and lower teeth. So it pushes just basic things to appreciate. Food between upper and lower. Another function, swallowing. Try to swallow. Sit there. Try to swallow without moving your tongue. You feel sort of helpless, don't you? Nothing happens. You can't swallow without moving your tongue. So swallowing, just fundamental. And the purpose of swallowing then is to take the food back into the oral pharynx pushes food back in oral pharynx. Now, another very important function is speaking. Turn to the person sitting next to you and try saying a sentence without moving your tongue. You feel sort of stupid? <laughs> Isn't it amazing? And then tell the person to say a sentence and watch what that tongue does. 
you know, well, I'm talking to you, mine's out, it's in, it's back, it's forth, it's going all over all the time. Tremendously versatile function, something you've never probably thought about. All right, so now we're ready to bring the food back from the mouth into our digestive tract. Let's look at the layers of the digestive tract. See, the difference between the digestive system and the nervous system is that the nervous system, you have to think of everything because you don't know what it looks like. Here, these are everyday things that you learned in kindergarten, but you've never really thought about them but you know where they are. All right, so layers of digestive system. So we're going to have a mucosa. A submucosa, a muscularis, and a serosa. And these are found throughout your digestive tract. But they'll have certain characteristics that are only found in the stomach. They'll differ when they get to the small intestine, but we'll always have the four layers. The mucosa then will be the mucous membrane. will differ because of its amount of connective tissue, because it's the part that will allow swelling of the tube. If you swallow a big piece of apple, it's got to expand, and it's because of the connective tissue. So we have loose CT. also here, I know they're blood vessels, but we'll leave blood vessels, but we'll put smooth muscle here too, in our mucosa, sorry. And now we come down to loose connective tissue, blood vessels, and nerves. And then our muscularis will be smooth muscle. And all of the tract will have at least two layers. An inner circular and an outer longitudinal. of contraction. They're seen very clearly. I'll show a picture of waves of contraction in these muscles. Whoops. The circular will be more for the position in this direction, and then the longitudinal will have waves to pass the food on in a process called peristalsis. Peristalsis. contraction to pass 
fast food along. When we get to the stomach, we'll see that the stomach has three layers because the stomach has the function of churning, not only to pass it along, but to churn, to mix. So three layers in stomach. The rest of the tract only has two. So the serosa now will be It's where the fat is stored, and then we'll have blood vessels as well. This is just main to show the, the primary differences between having fat, muscle, lots of loose connective tissue and glands as we go down the track. So now let's take a part of the track. Let's take the esophagus. your esophagus, about 10 inches, 6, extending from C6 to T11, so you can measure on the back to see how long it is, and it will be what will be posterior to the esophagus. Bodies of thoracic vertebra. Bodies of thoracic vertebra. What will be anterior to the esophagus? Trachea, good for you. Remember those tracheal rings? So the esophagus then is a continuation from the oral pharynx down to, where is it going? Stomach. Now the esophagus will have stratified squamous epithelium different from the mouth, the oral cavity, stratified, squamous, epi. Now, what will be different from our basic four layers will be the muscularis layer. It will have first skeletal muscle. That's for the first third. The second third, it will have a mixture of skeletal muscle and smooth muscle. third will have all smooth muscle. What's the advantage here? We've got the oral pharynx up here. You have your big piece of apple. It starts down the tube and it realizes it can't make it. Voluntarily cough, bring it back up again. If it gets down here, you can't touch it, it's smooth muscle, involuntary. 
So it's a protective device to have the skeletal muscle in the superior aspect of the esophagus. So now let's look at just a few words as we start into the abdominal cavity because we're before we one thing I want to add here though while we have it here we said the stomach was here what's the pH of this of the gastric juice in your stomach one so you've got a pH of one down here you've got HCl And sometimes, for some people, more often than not, that HCL will get into the lower part of the esophagus. What do we erroneously call that? Heartburn. It's nothing to do with the heart, but it's close to the heart, so felt here when the person came in. Must be, they didn't know their anatomy. So, HCL in lower esophagus. equals heartburn. So with that, let's move on down to the stomach. They always point to the area around their umbilicus, and you know how wrong that is. So let's find out, as young anatomists, where your stomach really is. So position. We're going to have inferior to the diaphragm. Stomach. See if you've got. 
got an ulcer of the stomach, you have to explain where it is, which part of the stomach. And the pylorus is four. And here we have a valve. What do we call this valve? Pyloric sphincter. What's it doing? It's allowing the chyme from the stomach to go into the duodenum. Chyme goes into the small intestine. And at the beginning, it's called the duodenum. Duodenum. All right. We'll have to stop there and show slides. digestive system, our oral cavity, our lips up here, the orbicularis oris covered with keratinized stratified squamous epithelium coming back in with the tongue on the floor of the oral cavity, the oral pharynx, here's the esophagus coming down into the stomach, you can see curved to the left of the midline, and then we'll join the duodenum here. In the next one, this is the, the lip showing stratified squamous epithelium. In the next one, these, this is a, a scanning EM of the tongue surface. So you can see the papilla. They're different kinds, different names, circumvallate, filiform, and so forth. I just gave you an example. Next one, and here is your papilla with your stratified squamous epithelium, and here are the taste buds along the side. In the next one, this is a scanning EM. What does it look like to you? A rose? How about a cabbage? This, this is a type of papilla. Isn't that amazing? See why it's important to brush your tongue as well as your teeth? All these crevices here, this is a type of papilla. This is another type with all these layers around them. Next one. And we're coming in showing the tongue attached to muscles. It's got complex muscles to give it movement. When, as we said when we were talking, it's going to swallow, push the epiglottis down, and go into the esophagus. Next one. Where are we? Esophagus showing stratified squamous epithelium, connective tissue, smooth muscle, and glands, blood vessels. Next one. This is um, peristalsis, showing muscle contraction, waves of muscle contraction. Skeletal muscle doesn't have waves. Smooth muscle has. We need it all the time, bringing substances down our GI tract. When we were in Africa, we learned that the common carotid of the giraffe has peristalsis to get that blood up that 15 foot neck. All these adaptations. In the next one, and where are we? This is esophagus. Look at the transition when we get to the stomach. We're going to change entirely at the stomach. We had no digestion going on up here to speak of 
except from the saliva coming down. But here we've got to have lots of glands. So next time we'll learn all about the glands in the stomach that will be producing the gastric juice to start massive digestion. All right? And we have uh, our 131A on speech uh, pathology today. She's terrific. She'll show you what happened.